What's up, everybody? It's Glenn and Big Jack back with another NFL uh, season preview. This uh, Today, we're going to be talking about the AFC South. Um, earlier, we talked about the NFC South. Now, we're going to talk about the AFC South. Give some thoughts on the division, maybe some betting angles that we're seeing and that we're liking, and just some overall thoughts on the division as well. Jack, it's good to be talking football. How you doing? Doing great, man. Happy to be back here. Uh, Today is going to be a little bit of a grind talking about what I think is a the worst division in football. Um, <laughs> I mean, we've seen a lot, plenty of bad football in the NFC North, but this is one of the worst divisions I think I've seen in a long time in the AFC South this year. So uh, <laughs> it'll be an interesting one. Right on. Um, but we love football, and to be honest, if it's uh, two good teams playing or two bad. Bad team's playing. I could honestly watch it either way. That being said, let's get right into the division. What team are we starting with? Yeah, you better be. You better believe I'll be getting my rocks off to that Tennessee Titans, Jacksonville Jaguars Thursday night football. Nothing game. better, baby. <laughs> All right, we'll start with uh, Houston Texans. Uh, they're still, you know, a, a much different team this year. They've had some interesting coaching changes, kind of cutting guys after one year of you know lame duck coaches. Uh, they made a big splash this year with D'Amico Ryan coming in from the 49ers. Um, I think he's going to have a little bit more of a leash as far as, you know, even if they're not so good out the gate, I think he's going to be a staple there for the next three to five years. Um, and, you know, longer than that, depending on how it goes. But I think he's going to get some good time to see if he can turn it around. Made some big splashes in the draft. They sort of went all in on improving now. Um, they traded away their capital from next year. They went out, they grabbed C.J. Stroud, the quarterback out of Ohio State, and they traded right back into that third overall pick to go back-to-back, -back, grab Will Anderson out of Alabama. Um, so draft-wise, you know, they're bringing in some big guns quick. Uh, it's exciting if you know, you're a Houston fan. It's going to be cool to watch those young guys come in together. Um, they made a big free agent signing with Jimmy Ward. Excuse me. I think that'll help their secondary. They drafted Stingley third overall in 2022. Um, he was a dog at LSU. People thought he was going to be the man, and he just wasn't very good his first year in the NFL, which happens for rookies. It's, I mean, so there's the jump from college to the pros is something that we'll never be able to wrap our heads around is just, you know, a couple of bums who <laughs> didn't play on that type of level, but he wasn't very good. And I think he has a lot of potential. There's a reason that he was very highly thought of. And they have another dude, uh, that Petrie guy, who's like also sort of a stud in the defensive backfield. He had a ton of interceptions and he dropped a couple interceptions as well. But if I'm not mistaken, I think he led the NFL I don't know if it was like for his position or just led the NFL in general in missed tackles. Yeah. So I think bringing a guy like Jimmy Ward in could maybe help those young guys along, get them a little bit better. Also had some interesting signings. Obviously, they're going to try to help C.J. Stroud, the young guy, as much as they can. They brought in Devin Singletary to play some running back. Robert Woods is a decent wide receiver. And Dalton Schultz, who's been sort of a stud in Dallas. Uh, pretty solid tight end. Uh, very reliable over the past couple of years. So I think their their arrow is trending up. Uh, they're obviously going to be trying to win. They gave away their draft capital for next year to the Cardinals. So, you know, they got nothing to hold back for as far as building through the draft next year. They're not going to have a number one pick. Not number one, excuse me. They're not going to have a first-round pick. Right. Um, and, you know, we'll see. I think they're – you know, they understand it's probably going to take a little time, but they're all stations go. They're going to be trying to learn and win as they move it along. They're plus 900, pretty long shot to win the division. Um, I don't think that's anything worth taking a flyer on as bad as this division is. I don't, you know, I don't think they make that big of a jump from complete dog shit to possibly a playoff team. Uh, their over under for wins is a little more interesting to me. It's six and a half. Uh, it's plus 115 at six and a half. It opened at five and a half, uh, you know, your standard minus 110. So it's been bet up a whole game. Um, and you're getting a little more than even money on it. I don't, I would have liked it at five and a half. I do think six and a half is a better number. I don't know if I could go over six and a half, but I think they are right about a six win ball club. Yeah. Um, it's just, how do I put this? This this team 
they were so poor last year, and the signings they made are like nice players, but nobody that moves the needle a ton in my mind. And then like the draft picks, like even if Will Anderson is the best edge in this draft, like Hutchinson, you could argue maybe was uh, for the Lions, like. Still, it's gonna take a couple of years to like really hit his stride, like the way that you're expecting. And they just gave away so yeah, much draft capital. Point. You know, I, I think they're gonna be bad again, man. I really do. Um, yeah. You know, uh, is no, is I was, I was shocked when they did the trade for that reason because I like you said about you think they're gonna be bad again. I was shocked when they did the trade. I get it. You know, yeah, you're making a move, going up, you're trying to. GMs, you know, making a statement about this is this is the year we're going to start changing things, but that's tough. Giving up a first round draft pick next year, that's probably going to be another top. I think they gave up their. Five. I think they gave up their second round this year too, which is crazy. They did, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they signed Dalton Schultz too, which I think he's a, a good tight end, but he's coming from Dallas's offense, which was loaded. Um, it's just a team that I look at and. They look bad to me. Like, the roster still looks terrible. Um, just to put it bluntly, you know, I think they could be the worst team in the NFL again. And and <laughs> I, I think that's a real real possibility. Um, I mean, I guess technically the Bears were, but the Texans could be right in that hunt again for the most dog shit team in the NFL. That's how Lovey Smith, baby. Um, getting, it, getting it done on week 17. Yeah, I mean, the <laughs> – if I'm seeing this right, right now they're over unders at six and a half, and the under is minus 141. So I'm not betting it, but I ain't betting on that over. That's all I'll tell you right now. So yeah. uh, I'd be shocked if they win seven or more, but I don't like that minus 140 number. So um, Texans, I hate to say this, but I think you might be the worst team in the football. In the national football. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're going to be uh, turning any heads, but always interesting nonetheless to watch those young quarterback so i'm sure i'll keep an eye to him a little bit just to check out see if cj stroud's making any sort of noise down there um i do well, think i do think that was the right pick with the number number two pick though yeah i don't know everyone was kind of tweaking about the new um i can't pull the name off the top of my head it's like the new wonder league right right, right. like the iq now. type and, deal yeah. yeah and how like disgracefully horrible like no one's ever seen such a bad score on it and how like there's like a demarcation of like if anyone who's ever had below like an 80 or whatever it was right. has amounted to nothing. Like you have to have like a certain number. And he was like or, a 10. Yeah. It's like a marker <laughs> of like, you, like you'll probably be, it's like an indicator of like, if you have at least a, you know, whatever you have a chance. And if you're below this, like no one has ever amounted to anything. And yeah, he was like one of the worst of all time, but I don't really know what the hell that stuff means. Um, he was he looked incredible against Georgia. That's all I could tell you. That's only about the only time I watched him. Um, we'll keep it moving. We'll go into the Colts. This team is very interesting to me. Um, Shane Steichen, I think is yep. how you pronounce his yep. name, coming over from Philly, first year head coach. Um, you never know how that sort of thing goes. Nathaniel Hackett last year, good grief. So. You know, people thought highly of him, and look how that turned out. But Shane Steichen coming from Philly, I think it's interesting in the sense of what they were doing with Jalen Hurts and what they have the potential to do with Anthony Richardson. Um, I also think it's interesting that Gardner Minshew's the backup, just as he was in Philly. Uh, Gardner Minshew's a fairly accomplished player. I mean, not, he's not anyone, you know, there's a reason he's not like a surefire starter, but... He could play a little football, and oh, that's no another doubt. situation where a lot of times in the NFL when things are not going perfectly, you know, you're kind of like, well, should Gardner Minshew be taking the snaps? Like, do we have a chance to win this shit division if we had someone else back there? Um, but we'll see how it goes. I think there's a chance that Gardner Minshew might start to start the season, but I feel like when you draft a guy like Anthony Richardson that high, you don't have great expectations going in. I think you just throw him into the fire, get him out there, play him I think young, so too. Be what you got from those first couple of years before you have to make a decision on whether or not you're going to pick up his fifth year option and all that sort of thing. Um, obviously, they have the Jonathan Taylor situation. Jonathan Taylor's a stud. Um, he's kind of gotten in a spat with Jim Irsay, the owner. They're kind of back and forth about running backs don't matter. Obviously, everyone knows running backs don't matter. 
but the guy wants to get his money. Uh, you know, I'm not going to knock someone for trying to get their money. Go do what you want to do in that regard. Um, but if that situation keeps getting uglier, that's a problem because a young quarterback like Anthony Richardson com- comboed with a guy like Jonathan Taylor is nice. But without that, uh, they're going to be bailing water, I think. Um, they do have a decent receiving core. Um, you know, they drafted Josh. I guess I shouldn't even say it. I know they have a decent receiving core. They might have a decent receiving core. Michael Pittner, yeah. Pittner Jr., I think, is a player. I think he's pretty good. And just a lot of these guys we'll be talking about when we look at these divisions are honestly just selfishly guys I'm familiar with because I was wondering if the Bears were going to get them. Uh, I can't pretend to be some sort of draft expert, but Josh Downs out of North Carolina, I was, you know, a name that was getting thrown all around a lot for the Bears, and that's uh, he went to the Colts. So I'm interested to see how what he looks like. Um, and they, you know, they just didn't spend a ton of money this year. I feel like they're kind of similar to a position the Bears were in last year. Um, they like Anthony Richardson, I feel like, and they're, you know, going to see how it goes with him but they weren't ready to go all in. They have like already a projected close to like 80 million in cap space for next year. So I think they're in a a good spot where they're like, Hey, you know, we're going to chill this year, get in this first year coach, get in this first year QB, start to build some things. And then depending on how we look, we're going to attack next off season with that big cap space number. Uh, They're plus 650 to win the division. I know once again, that's a big, you know, some nice juice. I think you're just burning your money. I wouldn't throw anything at that. Their over-under wins is six and a half. Um, it opened at six and a half, but it was super juiced to the uh, under or over. I'm sorry, it was minus 150. Now it's still six and a half, but it's closer to like minus 125. I don't love – I would honestly probably – I don't know. I might take a flyer on the under for this team, yeah. but you know, we'll see how it plays out. Sure. Um, so real quick, everything I hear about Anthony Richardson post draft and a lot of what I heard leading up to it, I think if I was a GM, I would have maybe considered him number one if I was the Panthers. Um, no, I you're think good. you're good. My computer's getting close to dying, so I'm just going to plug it in. So I'm listening good. to you. But yeah, okay. no, I I agree. Anthony Richardson had a lot of like incredible measures. Just his tools are incredible. I think his makeup is really good. Um, I'm excited to see his career arc and, and what ends up happening with his story. Um, overall, the roster is better than the Texans roster that we just talked about, but it's not that much better. Um, you know, if, if you made me pick one one side or the other on that six and a half number, I think I'm going the over, but I don't feel good about it. Um, I'm also praying to God Jonathan Taylor's playing and is somewhat happy. Um, I don't know. Uh, the Well, you're also sort of a Colts guy, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, their losses, I don't think they lost too much. Honestly, Bobby Okariki's off the ball linebacker. It's not the end of the world. Um, I like a lot of what they do with the draft. They had a lot of draft picks. Um, I, I see them like on the two or three year pro- like projections, like kind of on the up and up. But this year, I think they might take their lumps. Like I said, gone to head, probably going the over, but don't feel good about it. Um, that's my thoughts on the. Yeah, my, my brother Will is actually uh, in town right now, and he just made a comment off to the side. Uh, he lives in yeah. just south of Indianapolis, and he okay. was saying, uh, asking me if Darius Leonard's healthy this year, which he is. Um, that's Leonard. a good point. That's a good name to pull because he wasn't last year, um, and I think that that's you know one of those difference maker type of oh, guys on that side of big the ball. Time. So Definitely. their defense should be better, but I don't know if that covers all their you know, issues. And I, I don't love that team this year, but I am interested in them for sure. I agree. Um, moving on to the Tennessee Titans, Mike Glenn's favorite team. Not this year. Chicago Bears. <laughs> you love your boy, Mike Vrabel. Uh, you know, he's done some good things in his first few years as head coach down there. Their quarterback situation is just bizarre. I'm assuming Ryan Tannehill is going to be the day one starter. I guess they've given up on Malik Willis because they drafted Will Levis. <laughs> you know, they got a lot going on. 
I would love to see Will Levis get some run, so I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but, you know, Derek Henry's been involved in a lot of trade rumors. He hasn't been moved. Um, I guess where there's smoke, there's fire. I wouldn't be surprised if he is eventually moved. Another interesting thing to me about this team is they drafted Peter Skronsky. Uh, That was another guy the Bears were all over. Some people were maybe disappointed that they didn't draft Skronsky when they ended up going Darnell Wright. Um, I think, you know, we've grown to be happy with the Dar. I was happy at the time with Darnell Wright. But um, it will be interesting to see what a guy like Skronsky does down there uh, compared to what Wright does with the Bears. Um, And then they have, you know, one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL and Jeffrey Simons or Simmons, however you want to pronounce his last name or however he pronounces his last name, I should say. Um, But, you know, I think Vrabel's a great coach. um, And I think they could, you know, get it done. They're plus 325 to win the division. I guess I like a little bit of value there. Um, You know, we're going to get to the Jaguars next. They're a pretty clear favorite. I don't think I'm betting against them, but if you were like, you got to throw a little pocket change on someone, I'd probably do it on the Titans, more of a bet on just Rabel being a good coach. Maybe Tannehill plays his socks off knowing he's got Will Levis right behind him. And, you know, it's his last chance to sort of prove something because no one's probably ever going to invest in him after this season. Um, And Derrick Henry, you know, maybe he'll be running angry, you know, if he's still there. But they just don't got a lot going on. They don't got a lot going on that gets me excited. Their over-under for wins is seven and a half. Um, it's juiced a little bit to the over still. It's uh, minus like 130 over seven and a half. It opened seven and a half at like even money. So it's, you know, it, it, the number hasn't moved. The odds have a little bit, you know, towards that over. But, you know, nothing crazy. You saying you like the over given that thumbs up? Yeah, I think it's the over, and I think uh, if it's not the over, I think uh, Vrabel's time has maybe, you know, run its course in, in Tennessee. You know, I think he's a guy that um, you just want to him run his course there, so he comes to the Bears if Eberflus has a bad. Wow, season. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> now that gets me excited. So um, no, I just it's a team. Their their roster. It's good enough, and their coaching is good enough. They're going to win at least eight. So I like the over. Um, I don't love the minus 123. I wish it was minus 110. But uh, not even gun to the head, just what would I bet? It's the over for sure. Uh, set over seven and a half. Um, it also helps that I feel like they could potentially get two wins against the Texans, and they could potentially get two wins against the Colts, depending on how they play. Um, yeah, it's just a bad division, man. That's yeah. why I said, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet the Jags because I don't see the value in it. Right. Um, and plus three twenty five is decent. I mean, I like I said, I'm to get me to play a future. I'm gonna have to be like, you know, really lock the fuck in on it. But if I had to, I think I would be the Titans to win the division. Honestly, the I'm looking at their depth chart right now per ESPN, and God knows if ESPN's right, but. Uh, they, they can't get a golf score, right? I'll tell you that much right now. But uh, you know, they, they'll put in birdie for a guy, and you look back 10 minutes later, he's got triple bogey. But uh, fucking, I'm looking at their roster, and other than quarterback and then like maybe like a stud tackle, it's just really just kind of a solid roster. It's, it's, it's no like huge names other than Jeffrey Simmons, who you mentioned. Um, but it's also like a bunch of guys who can play football. I'll be interested to see what happens with uh, their right tackle suspended. I think, I think for gambling, if I'm right. Um, oh, really? One of those? Yeah. He's gam- a lot of guys who got caught up in that stuff. Yeah, he's suspended for sure. I think it was for gambling. But I'll be interested to see if, if Scarancy, like fills in that right tackle until that guy gets back and then he sh- shifts back to guard or if they are, are just going to play like their backup right tackle or what. But I think the D-hop addition was big. Um, you know, even though he isn't what he used to be, I don't think, I just think he's a guy that, um, will, will, you know, Traylon Burks is not a number one. So it's nice to have hop out there and then Burks could be a number two. Um, and then obviously you got Derek Henry and then Mike Vrabel's just philosophy. I think they're a team that I will be very surprised if they win less than seven and a half games. And if they do, I think they need to consider firing Mike. 
And I like Mike Vrabel. But yeah, that's you my love thought. Mike Vrabel. Yeah. That's a good point about Hopkins, though. I didn't even bring him up. That was a big, big, pretty recent signing that, you know, just as little as 18 months ago, a lot of people thought he was the best receiver in the NFL. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I'm sure he'll be, you know, kind of similar to how we said about, uh, you know, some of the guys we talked about in other conversations about you know people so i think we mentioned frank reich when we talked about the nfc south the guy kind of looking for redemption or vengeance or however you want to put it i could see deandre hopkins being on a mission to prove some people wrong this season for sure Um, before we jump into the jags uh who you think has more wins at starting quarterback for the titans this year ryan Tannehill or will levis Tannehill. okay so you think he rides it out um, I forget what pick Levis was, but I think if NFL teams thought he was ready I, to I don't start, wanna, I don't want to misspeak on it, but I'm pretty sure they took him like relatively early second round. Second round. Like I think, took, I think if teams thought he was ready to start or like at least like were excited about him, I think that. He would have gone in the first round, even if it was like later in the first round. A team would have traded back towards the end, got that extra year of security on his contract. Um, yeah, I Mel think Kiper, that Mel, Mel Kiper had him as his number one quarterback. So dot 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 dot. But I, <laughs> dude, I I don't think Will Levis plays very much this year, and if he does, that's not a good sign for the for the team. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. All right, we'll keep it moving right along to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, they're the favorite, minus 167 to win the division, the last thing I looked at. Um, I mean, they're going to win the division. There's little to no doubt in my mind. Trevor Lawrence took quite a step last year. Doug Peterson came down there and just completely changed everything. That's mess that Urban Meyer sort of left behind in his wake. Um, you know, they got some good weapons. Travis Etienne sort of had a – borderline breakout season last year dude sort of he's just been a stud um the only thing that travis Etienne wasn't great in was like short yardage situations and goal line situations and they drafted tank bigsby out of auburn who his name is fitting dude his sort of tank. a tank, yeah, his <laughs> yeah, tank. He really is uh and i think he's gonna make a difference for them it's i mean you gotta have those one two punches that's kind of why the running backs are so invaluable because you got to plug and play you can you know you can fill those spots with other bodies um and travis Etienne, as good as he is you know sometimes you need that bigger body those guys can get the tougher yards uh and i think tank bigsby is going to help that offense a lot um i think that's a name to sort of watch out for uh they signed evan ingram who obviously had a good connection sort of a little bit of a safety valve for trevor lawrence last year and then one of the biggest storylines i'm looking for is that calvin ridley return uh coming off the full year suspension for his gambling stuff uh i mean he was bad he got hurt the year before the suspension when he was in atlanta he had some injuries had a bad year uh and then had the suspension with the gambling stuff but before that point in time man he was on pace to be something serious and i can't wait to see what he looks like He's not coming off an injury. He's just coming off a suspension. Um, you know, I who knows what kind of work ethic he has or, you know, what he's been doing. But I'm excited to see it, that's for sure. Um, and then, you know, they lost Jawan Taylor, a uh, guy that I'm sure we were interested in and in getting Chicago on the offensive line. Obviously, he's a right tackle. The Bears drafted Darnell Wright with their first overall – with their – First round pick uh, ended up being 11th overall or 10th overall, whatever it was. Um, But they have a pretty young offensive line, and that's the only thing that worries me about this team with losing some of the guys they did and how young they are. Uh, You know, I'm not sure they're going to be the most reliable line or how deep the line is if any injuries do come about. Um, and as Trevor Lawrence being a little bit more of a, tr- you know, he can do get it done with his feet at times, but he's a pocket type of guy. Um, and I'm not sure a young O line is the best situation for them, but I do think they're the class of the division. Um, I think they get it done. Their over under wins right now is 10 wins even at minus 10. 
excuse me, it opened at uh, nine and a half, heavily juiced to the over. So it hasn't really changed much. It was like minus 150 at nine and a half. Now it's an even 10. Um, I think that's a good number. I could see them going 10. 10, so. 10 it's at 10 and what? It, it's minus what? Just 10 even. Minus 110 or what? Yeah, minus 110. Um, all right, so my thoughts on the Jags. So I got mixed feelings on the Jags. I could see it going two ways. I could see them legitimately, if Trevor Lawrence takes even a little bit more of a step, which you probably think he does, um, I yeah. could see him being in MVP conversations with that with the weapons they have there. I could see them being a playoff contender. Um you know, maybe not a Super Bowl contender, given how deep the AFC is, but like, yeah, you know, for sure the class of, of the division. The AFC is crazy this year, man. Crazy. I could also see their offensive line being dog shit, like you touched on. And dude, their defense can get after the quarterback, but I don't know. It, it was kind of like everything was going right last year for them. It almost felt like at certain times. And um, well, dude, you knew last year. In our, you know, the, our main stick of what we do about the weekly picks, yeah. I was all over. The you were all over earlier in the year, yeah, you and were. then I kind of, I kind of at the wrong time. But I knew they were like they had something, and then they turned it on down the stretch. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, as you touch on, I'm worried about um, their offensive line. I'm worried about their secondary. I really like their coach. I think Peterson is really good, and then I, I really like Lawrence. Um, and when you got a good coach and a good quarterback, you tend to like the team. Um, you're saying the number's 10. I lean the under um, barely, um, but I think they'll be good. I, I think they'll be they'll be an above-average NFL team. Um, I could see them winning 10 or 11, but I, I, I'd lean 9 over 11, I think. Um, yeah. Um, I could, I, I think the best thing you said was about the coach and quarterback combination. I mean, some of the things we saw Lawrence do, what he did in the playoffs, you know, that comeback against the chargers, you know, the growth that you saw from him as a passer from year one to year two, um, along with Doug Peterson coming in, he's going to have another year in his offense and his system. And I just feel like that. Like on a on a team level that elevates everybody around you too. When you have full confidence in your quarterback, you got full confidence in your coach, and you're like, "All right, we better fucking pull our weight because we got these two dogs leading us into the fucking battle every week." Um, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, if you want me with it a whole the div- the whole division to pick which bet I like the most, it's probably a split between the Texans under and the Titans over. Um, those are probably my two favorite bets. The only MVP bet, bet I would even consider in this division is Trevor Lawrence, and I'd have to see what the odds are. I don't know what they are. Um, and then, you know, I, I really like Anthony Richardson, but I think I'm steering clear of any kind of offensive rookie of the year bet with him. Yeah, I don't yeah, – Anthony Richardson was uh, – I think he's like, he's like a third. I think he's, he's like a couple-year project for me. Yeah, he's the third favorite to uh, – win offensive rookie of the year and i mean you know (laughs) we've seen what that looks like about a guy who hasn't really played that much when we drafted mitch trubisky um he just didn't dude he didn't play a ton in college i don't know um you know i don't know what his experience looks like or you know i'm not that confident in him right away um sorry i'm just scrolling looking for Trevor Lawrence is plus seventeen hundred to win the MVP. He's like the eighth favorite. I would consider throwing a little something on that because I could see a scenario where everything goes right, and all of a sudden, you know, the Jags are beating the bad teams in their division. And well, that's you know, what I would say about they're the they're eleven and six, and he's fucking got you know forty TDs and fifteen picks because he's throwing these awesome receivers. And yeah, that's what I would say about the over-under, where you kind of lean the under. I mean, I know your division's always tough. Some weird stuff always happens, but right. that's a division I see them getting six away. I could see them going 6-0 and oh in the division. They very well could. And then, you know, you just need to find a couple more. They, they very well could. But 
I don't know. I, I still I still see some value in the Titans. I might be crazy and I might be biased, but I, I still see some value there. Um, I think the Texans are going to be horrible, and I think that t- the Colts will be like a half a step up from horrible. Um, and then, you know. Yeah, I honestly see the only thing in this division that I think my favorite play is honestly the under Colts wins. It's six and a half. It's a little bit juice to the over around minus 130, minus 125, depending where you shop. But you could get that under six and a half closer to like a plus 110, plus 115. I think the Colts win six games. I think it's under. Um, that's probably my favorite play. And I tend to actually agree with you about the Titans. I, I'm not going to play any future as far as the division winner goes. I do think Jacksonville takes it, but I, you know, if anyone else does, it's going to be the Titans. And plus, yeah, five is pretty good. You could just see a scenario where they're just a tough, tough fucking football team. And yeah, tough. Yeah. They, they do have some veterans, you know, maybe they pull together, get going. And, you know, that offensive line in Jacksonville is suspect. So, all right. That's our AFC South Roundtable Talk. Big Jack, I appreciate you joining us. Any last words? No, man. Worst division in football. (laughs) I think the NFC South is worse, even just based on these two divisions. But, yeah, a couple of dog shit divisions. South South is ugly, baby. Always has been. The North will rise again, baby. All right. All right, until next time. Bears. Bears.